Hey y'all, CB here, the No BS Welder. Thanks for watching NBS Welding. Getting a look at the next project here, you can see we've got an aluminum trailer here. I've already removed this cosmetic piece uh, of uh, aluminum floor plate that was on the front, and I got that off there where we can see what the problem is. Trailer tongue is almost completely broken off of this trailer. This uh, trailer tongue is made out of a 7-inch tall, 2-inch wide rectangular aluminum tube. And it is broken all the way across the bottom and up both sides. The top flange of the tube is the only portion of the tubing still intact. Uh, this is really, really interesting group of people that I met here. These people are here in the Appalachian Basin from New Zealand. And uh, I think this trailer actually broke in Canada. And uh, they had to load it onto another trailer to haul it here for the work they're doing here. And what they do is they extract lithium from, uh, from wells. And they're here in the Appalachian Basin extracting lithium from the natural gas wells here. Uh, something that was especially interesting about this type of tubing, and this is something I've never seen before, but as I look up inside of here, what I'm seeing and what I'm trying to show you is that this rectangular tubing has an extra centerpiece. If you see where I'm reaching my finger down on the other side and, and you can start to see my, my finger in the opening... That's halfway down that 7-inch tall tube. So what I'm showing you is this 7x2 rectangular aluminum tubing has a 2-inch bottom, a 2-inch wide center section, and a 2-inch wide top. All of those being, uh, you know, the horizontal sections of the tube. I've cut it open here because I had to verify what I suspected was that the... Uh, the connection for the wires for the trailer lights is ran inside of that tubing. And for the repair that we've got to do here, that can't be that way. Uh, it's a nice way to do it, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have it that way because there's just no point in that wire being inside that tube that I've got to weld. I'd much rather cut it where I want it cut and get it out of the area that I'm going to be welding in, and then we'll put that back together later. Uh, if I was to even attempt to do that, I know I'm going to ruin it, so it'd be silly. Uh, forgive me here for throwing a plug in for the t-shirts, but I'd like for anybody that would like to support the channel by buying a t-shirt, uh, we've got NBS Welding t-shirts available. They're $25. Send Tina an email, uh, nbswelding at aol.com. We also have an Amazon storefront uh, where you you can go to the, click on the Amazon link in the description of my videos, and you can go to our Amazon storefront and see the products I use and endorse. And if you buy any of those, it helps out the channel. So... What I'm showing you right here is uh, the shop fabrication part, which involves fabricating the, the braces that we're going to need for uh, the repair that we're going to do on, on the trailer. So I, what I've got here on the table, uh, I always throw a blanket down when I'm dealing with aluminum. It scratches really easy and gets contaminated from from grease or steel or anything that might be on the table so i threw a blanket down i've got some uh one eighth inch aluminum uh and when i was at the site actually i took some i took some uh poster board and i made a pattern that gave me all the angles and and information that i needed uh and here is this poster board. And what I'm doing right here, you can see in this section of the video where I've got my bevel square. And I use the angle on the poster board to set the bevel square. Now I'm going to clamp the bevel square up on my brake to use as a visual guide 
so that when I put the material in the brake and I go to bend it, I can look at something that'll tell me about how far I want to bend my parts. Because what I'm wanting to make here is reinforcement plates that I'm going to put on here. Uh, I want to put on the trailer after I've repaired the weld to strengthen the, the, the area and reinforce it. So there's, uh, obviously there would be two inside plates that get bent more and two outside plates that don't get bent as much. And then there's a bottom plate that will act as a gusset. So we're back on site and what I'm doing right here is uh, I, I've got to get this thing straight because obviously it's it after breaking and, and, and bending up, it's not where it's supposed to be. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, on that part of it is I'm using a come along and a jack and I'm going to connect the thing to the super service truck. And uh, by doing that, I've got something pretty heavy and static that the front of it is going to be connected to. And then I'll get, uh, you can see me getting a block here. And I'll be putting a jack underneath the front of the trailer. And by raising the trailer up, uh, it'll eventually get to a point where it's, it can't lift the weight of the super service truck. So it has to bend that front back down and push it back down where it belongs. And here, I've got one of my one of my favorite levels for stuff like this. This level is one that I can adjust to make it level even when something's not level. So in a case with something like this, the trailer tongue does not have to be level. It just has to be the same amount out of level as the rest of the trailer. So I set it. Uh, with the trailer frame back in the back where there was no damage and then adjusted it to to get the the trailer tongue in alignment with it now here i'm ready to disconnect it and what i found out was that i can't get the super service truck down low enough to get it out so i end up pulling the pulling the pin on the tra on my trailer hitch and just driving uh and and it was starting to come apart uh, and it got stuck. It just needed warped with a hammer. And we got that uh, disconnected now. And I've got it tacked where it needs to be. The next thing that really needs to be, uh, really needs to be stressed when, when you're out in, the, out in the open, MIG welding or TIG welding of any kind, uh, you really need to build you a tent. And it's especially critical with aluminum because the wind will blow your shield gas away and you're not gonna you're not gonna make good welds without shield gas this argon shield gas that i'm blowing on the weld when i make aluminum mig welds or tig welds it's absolutely critical to make quality welds so you got to block the wind uh i'm starting out with the r captain mig 200 with the spool gun and an 035 thousandths uh, or no 35 inch diameter, which is a 35 thousandths inch diameter, uh, 4043 uh, alloy aluminum MIG wire. And you see, I'm uh, I'm welding that vertical up right there. Uh, and on the structural repair, I wanted to use the 4043. Uh, that's a little bit, a little bit softer aluminum alloy, and it uh, it did a good job. Uh, I also, I think there was a little bit of a benefit in using the smaller diameter to weld vertical up on the aluminum, uh, the O35 and the spool gun uh, on that Art Captain Mig 200. It just, uh, it did a good job and. Uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate you don't actually MIG weld aluminum in the field every day. So, uh, yeah, probably not the greatest in the world at it, but uh, I think I got some really sound welds in there. After that, I switched to the, the Art Captain MIG 205 MP, and in this, uh, uh, in this part of the welding, I'm using the, 
the 045 diameter 5356 alloy to weld these braces on. And because it's the larger diameter and uh, the, the stiffer 5356 alloy, I'm able to run that through a standard gun. And one thing, another thing I learned about this clear plastic was uh, that shortwave radiation from the sun comes in through the plastic, but it doesn't escape. So I was burning up, uh, had to strip, strip down some clothes, but this is what we've got. So you see, there's a, there's a bottom, there, there's a bottom gusset and the two side gussets that got welded on after the repair was made. And, uh. Those Art Captain machines did a really good job. Uh, I did the, the bracing parts of it on Pulse MIG with the 205 MP with the 045 5356. And the repair part was done with the MIG 200 with the spool gun and an 035 in a 4043 alloy. So to finish this up now, uh, since I've added those braces that cosmetic part of the aluminum diamond plate had to be trimmed uh, before I put it back on there. So marked it out. I ended up trimming it with a jigsaw. And uh, y'all remember if you got to work some light aluminum, you can use your woodworking tools. That was, a, that was a woodworking blade on my jigsaw that I used to cut that with. And the thing I ran into on this generator plug is this is an L530 three-prong three generator plug. And uh, the outlet that was mounted on the side of here was broke, and I needed a new one. And the only one that I found was an L14 four-prong, an L14 30-amp. Uh, I really needed to get this replaced and fixed, and... Uh, what ended up happening was that white plug that I had was uh, the the actual plug that they had was the only part of their system that wasn't broken. So what I was able to end up doing was I used the box for the L14 and I used the plug for the L50 and put that together and it worked. They uh, We tried the cord and it, it plugged right in so... We got her all fixed. Everything uh, put back together and reassembled and put the wiring back together. And uh, this was a really good job. It was really interesting uh, learning a little bit about lithium extraction and talking to these people from New Zealand. And I, I want to thank you all for watching. And remember, y'all learn how to work with what you got and you always have everything you need.